Hey everybody, thank you very much for joining me again and welcome back to another episode of Getting to Know the Detectorist. The next star that I'm interviewing is none other than that empty chair, or is it? Let's see who's behind the scenes here. Come on, get in! And I see somebody, oh my word, it's Deep Digger Dan. Dan, Thank you very much for joining me. I that really appreciate terrible, it. That was the most terrible come on, get in I've ever heard in my life. Oh, man, I tried my best. Uh, um, okay. You sounded very South African. Where are you from? <laughs> Dan, <laughs> let's get serious. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Um, Thank you for having me. No problem, Can man. Can I just say to everybody watching... I'm not drinking because I want to. I'm drinking because he told me to come on with beer. So uh, I just uh, wanted to clear that up. I'm going to have to take full responsibility for that comp comment because it's true. <laughs> now, Dan, we've been talking about uh, where you're going in the near future. Let's, let's go back in time a little bit. And when did you start metal detecting? Two years ago. Uh, almost to the day. Two years, is that all? Did you, no. did you start in England or did you start abroad? I'd never metal detected in England. I started in Germany, in Berlin. And where did you get your inspiration or was it just something that you thought of trying and uh, worked for you? I think it was because... How can I explain this? In Germany... I couldn't speak German. I had no friends. I had nobody to talk to. So mm -hmm. I needed a hobby I could do on my own. Yeah. And I've, everybody's interested in treasure, are they? Everybody of course. Everybody wants to find treasure. So I think I was just on YouTube one day looking up uh, finding treasure or something. And I came across metal detecting and I thought, yeah, I'll give that a go. Now, the that. issue that I had was selecting a detector now I, if i remember correctly now i didn't i haven't watched all your video uh, videos going back all the way um you were using you the euro um say again sorry you haven't watched all my videos <laughs> not uh, i would say 80% of your video wait wait let me explain please now uh, the last video th that i can remember you using a uh, garrett ace 350 or the euro ace was in Germany, you being chased by police, and uh, they explained to you that they actually found a bomb in the area and you need to vacate, no need for you to run. So <coughs> after that, or well not long after that, you announced that you're returning to uh, England, and then for a while you disappeared off the radar, <coughs> getting settled in, all that stuff, so that I can understand. And then all of a sudden we saw a video of you being on the beach looking for fossils and it's a really small section of be uh, beach yeah. what machine did you use there was it still the uh, the uh, the euro ace it was the at pro oh so you, oh yes pro. of course yeah sorry i forgot about you upgrading while you were still in germany uh, so you were using the at pro found a lot of trash which irritated the hell out of you as well as yeah. you not being able to make use of public transport to get to remote sites to detect. So that I can understand as well. Um, and then I'm jumping a bit forward, but then you got the, the, the what's it called? The Rolls Royce of detectors, the E track. I'm a big Mind Lab fa fan, by the way. You got the E track. And then. You were trying to sell us a house on the beach. Well, what was that house? Uh, you remember the the building that you said you want twenty thousand quid for it uh, pounds. Um, what? Pounds. Oh, sorry. No, I'm I'm actually pretty yeah. sure you said twenty thousand. Hmm. Can't I change. I said hundred thousand. No, you can't change your your I price now. I don't know. <laughs> what was that it's building used for? Do you know anything about that building? It was a World War II bunker, you know, during the war, 
these bunkers were put all up across the beaches to stop ah, the okay. Germans invading our beaches. Now, Dan, um, your e track died at the side of the beach, and uh, you afterwards I saw a video of you using uh, XP Deus, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. How do you yeah. find the difference? That, that's two way different machines. Did you uh, did it take you long to get used to the signals? With the Deus, not at all. It's a, it's a massive difference. The Deus and the e, the e track takes a lot of getting used to, mm -hmm. and it's heavy. It's very heavy. Don't get me wrong. I love the De I love the e track. On beaches, it is fantastic. But that died on me. And now I've got the the Deus, and it is the best machine I've ever used. Okay, so I don't like the plug companies, but the Deus for me so far is the best machine I've ever used. I've still got the wide <coughs> Spectra V3i to use. Okay. Um, but yeah, the Deus has been fantastic so far. And when it comes to pinpointers, what brand do you uh, would you prefer, or would you advise people to look into? Because I, the one thing that I love about uh, your honesty is when you semi reviewed the A AT Pro, you referred to the the poor design on the plastic or the computer box, and the connection to the headphones, and that yeah. actually uh, convinced me to look to other machines or other brands. And I decided to go on mine lab, and I I'm not uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm not sorry that I took that or made that decision. Now, uh, at the moment, the machines you use. Let's get back to the pinpointers. What uh, brand do you use? The Garrett Pro Pointer. So that's the only one that you use at the moment. Have you got any other Pro Pointers or pointer devices? No, no. Uh, that is one thing Garrett have got over everybody else. There isn't another Pro Pointer as good as the Garrett Pro Pointer. No, I agree totally. Um, I've seen Mine videos. Have brought one out. Um, what? What? Uh, can't remember what it's called. I know, but um, are you familiar with a YouTube uh, user named uh, Dave from Reddick Hunting Scotland? Dave is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was so scared that you would say, who the hell is that? <laughs> My word. Luckily, there was a delay in the video. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to blow me on trumpet. I'm, I'm hoping I'm right in saying this. Dave started videoing because of me. <clears throat> he got in touch with me and he bought some of my World War Two relics off me. Oh, okay. German. And, okay. And we became friends. And then he said, you know what? I think I'd like to try this myself. I'd like to try making these videos myself. And he has, and he's put out so many hours of videos, and his, his mm. subscribers have gone... I'll put a link. I'm saying I'll put a link. What I'm trying to do, mm -hmm. to you people who don't know what's going on... Yeah. This is his video, okay? Are you, are you still here? Yeah, I'm over there. You're there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On my phone, you're up there. Right. This is his video. Okay. Okay, but when he puts this on YouTube, I'm going to put it on my channel. And when I do put it on my channel, I'll put a link to Dave Relic Hunting Scotland in the description. Click on it. Click on him as well. You might as well. <laughs> oh. I'm actually going to do, uh, do a little pop-up in the corner of the screen uh, linking uh, because of my poor editing skills. But I'm going to put a link on the top right-hand corner to Dave from Relic Hunting Scotland. Thank you for endorsing his channel, uh, Dan. Now, you've been involved in Metal Detective for at least two years that you can remember. <laughs> that you can remember. What was your favourite find? Now, I, I know I'm asking an impossible thing, but what was your favourite find so far? Well, this was always going to come up, wasn't it? Of so course. I have my laptop ready to show you it. Oh, that's fantastic. In one of my last videos, I don't know how well you're going to see this. It's basically... Oh, there I can see it right. pretty well. 
Yeah, it's eighteen yep. hundreds. It's about eighteen eighty, eighteen ninety. It's what a drummer boy, a German drummer boy would. So it'd be about eleven years old, twelve years old. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a a young drummer drummer boy wearing this. Um, basically, you see five pictures here, and it's all from when I found it to cleaning it. So I've done five ah. stages of, of cleaning it, you can say. But you can't see it very well on, on the picture. But basically, if you can imagine a, a German drummer boy yep. who's 11 years old in 1880, um, who's 11 years old, that's what he would wear on his thing here, and he would hold his, his drum. So he'd, he'd drum on it. And that is the first good find I have. So for me, that is one of my favourite finds. I've got another one, which is a, a wedding ring from a, a German soldier. It's got a date inscribed in the wedding ring. And I think it's 1938 or something. So oh. just before he went to war, I've got, I've got a ring inscribed by him. I wish I could find out who it was and give it back to his family. Yeah. But I don't think I'll... Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, that's... that. Is it a, uh, Was it a silver or gold ring? It was gold. Gold? Oh, yeah. man, I still have to find my first gold ring. That's, a, that's something amazing. Now... When you look at all you have f found over the last two years, what is the one thing that pops into mind that you really want to find? Well, I've said this in one of my last videos. What I want to find is not something which has just been dropped, something which has been planted. Somebody has hidden something, yeah? I want okay, to yeah. find something hidden. So someone's dug a hole and they've put something there. And ideally, I'd love it to be a, a little box, a wooden box, box metal, and open it up. I don't care what's in it. It doesn't have to be diamonds or rubies or gold. Just open it up and it's full of history. Mm, mm. You understand that? Maybe it's 200 years old and it's just a box full of history. That's that's in. Actually, I, that fits in perfectly with your last video, the geocaching video. That's exactly what you want to find, without the coordinates, of course, by chance. That's yeah. also something that um, a friend of mine, he doesn't do videos. Um, he recently started <laughs> metal detecting. And um, because he's been living in this small town for all his life, people, you know, the local community knows him. And uh, somebody phoned him up this week and asked him to come to the house because their father that passed away buried a chest of old ammunition somewhere in the yard and they've got no idea where it is and they would like him to come with his metal detector and find it. I think that's fantastic. That's a, an awesome thing to do. Amazing. Amazing. Mm. Now, this is, again, you know, you asked me which is my favorite find of all time my best find of all time but you've just hit the nail on the head then mm -hmm. i found a, a gold ring it's on one of my videos yeah uh, a, a couple a guy from brazil a woman from manchester in england and they got married on a friday he lost his wedding ring on the saturday and rung me up on Saturday night, Sunday or something. I went on on Monday. He says, we just got married. We've lost his ring. I went to try and find it. And I found it. And that is, yeah, that is the best feeling I've ever had. Can you imagine finding someone's wedding ring? Can you imagine how distraught they are at losing the wedding ring? A few it's hours bad. after they lost it, you find it. Uh, that's actually... Uh, enough cause to do the celebration all over again, in my it opinion. Just, it wasn't just a matter of we've lost his wedding ring. It was a matter of we only got married two days ago. Yeah. So you can imagine how important it was to them. And yes, that 
All right, forget what I've just shown you. That was probably the best find I've ever had because it put a massive smile on their face. And the feeling you get from finding something which means so much to somebody else, that was amazing. So, yeah, no, that's actually... Me, that's my best find ever. Actually, I agree with you. To ask uh, any metal detectorist what was his favorite what is his favorite find up to date you can't really answer that question because you haven't found the thing that you know is your favorite yet so yeah that's actually a question i need to disqualify from these type of interviews now that that really is a cool story uh i hope i've got the privilege of doing something like uh, that what was the one dumbest day? thing that you've done while metal detecting Dumbest thing. I can only I can say the dumbest place. Will that do? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Anything that you've uh, done that was stupid with regards to metal detecting. I I went on Google Earth. Yeah. That is the best place to research Google Earth. I went on Google Earth and I found the perfect spot to go and find old things. Okay. Mhm. Mm I went to that spot. And it was a bog. Oh my word. When I say a bog, I mean a bog. <laughs> I, found, I found myself three feet, not three feet, no, two uh, feet deep in mud in February. Mm -hmm. <coughs> sloshing around in this mud. I don't know what you can see at the moment, but. It was the most disgusting thing you could imagine. And you look at yourself, you're not finding anything. You look at yourself and you think, why the hell am I here? <laughs> With each step. And I was. You, you, you. I was literally in two, three feet deep in mud. And I didn't video most of it. What would you call that? Uh, a morass? Uh, I wouldn't call it a morass. I'd call it call it a bog, which is what I've done, <laughs> I call it a bog, listen to me, it's a bog. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to ask you two questions with regards to this bog episode of yours, each step that you took, did you notice a difference of course in you smell, did. the swell, oh. you, you, you're stepping into rotting weeds and mud, it's going to yes. smell, yes, but I'll tell you something, it's the same smell, and it has got a distinctive smell. Like, yeah. Bang yeah. on. Your yeah, bang has on. got a very distinctive smell. The smell is usually related to treasure. I find treasure. If 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 that's going on, and yeah. you get a signal, you find something, and it's usually something good because nobody stepped there for a hundred years because mm. it wasn't a bog a hundred years ago. Oh, that's actually that's yeah, a yeah, point. yeah. Uh, actually, I've noticed this uh, the difference in smell, um, not not in a boggy area, but when you deep dig enough, <laughs> deep dig deep enough. <laughs> my word, oh, deep digger then confusion yeah, one one. He's been drinking. No, you've got no evidence. He says, "Look, I've had a few drinks." Um, <laughs> I'm going to say for the record, uh, he's got no proof, and if he does, I would like to see an uploaded YouTube video uh, 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 proving that. You know I've got proof. You oh. know I've proof. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I need to bend this mic away. I'm a bit loud. <laughs> I'm sure you in that little frilly, frilly dress. But I'm not going to do that. Cause I'm not gonna I can I, if I can say, uh, by, uh, based on the videos that I've watched from you, I would say, not that you found plenty of stuff, but the location was amazing, is the Roman cobbled road. I think that was in Germany. That place really stood out for me um, because of the history, the age. I would say, uh, in my opinion, that would be yeah. the most spectacular place that you visited. I'd agree. The best, yeah, I'd agree. The, the best place I've ever was in Frankfurt with my mate Bob. Bob. Okay, I have to make it very clear, Bob. 
Bob. Because Bob does, didn't want to be known as Bob. He, he didn't want to tell everybody who he was. But okay. He was a good but friend Bob. of mine. Mm -hmm. And he took me to some amazing places. And he took me to my first Roman places. I've never detected Roman areas before. And we did. We found Roman roads. We found Roman artifacts. Roman coins. So, yeah. Definitely frank um, with Bob. What is something, what is the type of video that you want to watch? If you've got uh, 10, 15 minutes that you want to kill, um, instead of flipping ov open a magazine while sitting down somewhere, I'm not saying where, and you've got your phone with you instead of a magazine and you flip through the videos on YouTube, what do you want to see and how much time do you want to spend watching that? And that goes for, it doesn't even have to be metal detecting. It can be anything on YouTube. What do you want to see? Right. The only videos I watch on are metal YouTube. detecting videos, okay? Cool. Or treasure hunting videos, okay? So right. Let's, all the rest are out of the equation. It's all down to treasure hunting videos. That's the only ones I watch. But I watch a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to see personally is something different people keep I don't want to see two minutes of people doing a live dig two minutes of somebody digging a hole yeah for their find I'd rather just spend 60 seconds watching Does that find. make any sense no of course I don't I don't want to waste that two minutes watching them digging it um, yeah no I understand it's completely everybody. It's the same for everybody. You just want to see them finding something fantastic. And yes, ideally, that point where they dig the hole, turn it over, and they find it within one minute. But it doesn't always work like that. So mm -hmm. no, I haven't I... got a preference. It, I'm not the man to I'm It's not my choice to choose which is the best kind of videos to watch really. Well, if I can... Everyone makes good videos in their <laughs> own way. It all, depends. it all depends on what's in the video. Yeah. You don't mind watching a video for 30 minutes just for one week, Penny, as long as the video is fun. Uh, your, your videos yeah. will develop if you pay attention to your viewers. I think it depends on... I think it depends on your... You've got to understand that it must be very hard for an American mm -hmm. to sh show an interesting video which is going to be um, exciting to the, to the rest. Can, can you understand that? No, I understand. They're, just going, they're probably just going to find maybe a lot of... They find a lot of silver coins in America. Mm -hmm. They do mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Um, it's very hard for them to show a video which Still is not just them or... finding it or whatever. You've just got to realise that some people have better circumstances Dan, than others. Ex thank you very much for joining me. I but really you're, appreciate you're your time. Two hours ahead of me. You've got work in the morning. I haven't. Hey, don't tell anybody. I've been telling them that I've, I'm living with my parents and they pay me a, a allowance. I don't have to work. Right. Well, let's tell all these. Let's tell him and let's tell her yeah. and that little girl and that little boy. Let's tell everybody. Yeah. He's been wanting to go to sleep one oh. hour before he started talking to me. He was so tired. <sighs> but he stayed awake just to interview me. So this is the guy. Let's all clap this guy. Oh, thank you, man. Actually, I feel really bad you're doing that, but it's a real pleasure talking to you. Uh, Dan, real thank life. you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Guys, click on the link below in the description to visit Dan's, web, uh, sorry, to Dan's channel. Uh, check out these videos. If you're not, if you haven't yet, I don't know under which rock you've been living. But thanks again, and thank you very much for joining me again. Dan, I'll talk to you again soon. Keep those videos coming.